Some people say, Jay, four kids, how can you afford this? See, I find that rhetoric ironic because that's like me asking how they can afford a cottage and a mortgage. You see, we all spend our money on what we deem important. And while you save for that vacay or pay for that Lincoln Navy or put away money for your child's Ivy League education, you see, I homeschool my children. And on most days, you can catch me walking, jogging, biking, or busing. So to me, money isn't priority, so you never catch me fussing. My name is Jamal Rogers. I am an artist. I am a father and I am employed. I traveled back and forth between my father's home country in Canada. Uh, I went to Guyana and I did some growing up there, went to school there, and there is poverty there, right? But the character of the people there, if you live there long enough, you won't see poverty there because everybody was content, right? And then when I came here, I actually experienced what I would consider poverty and it, and it hit me a little bit more sharper. When I came here, I lived in the projects. I went to Toronto, lived in the projects there and I came to Ottawa, eventually settled here when I was nine with my father and my brothers from Guyana. And it was much more noticeable, the, the state we were living in. In my home, like, we couldn't just go into the fridge and eat anything we wanted. There was a time to eat and that was it. In this part of the world, you can see the difference between moderate living and then low income. That you will feel poor. So don't panic, because the more you act frantic, the more you convince my children that they are the only deprived kids on the planet, it's a silly ideology, when really, it all boils down to how we perceive difficulties. A family with no cable TV may seem like crazy hippies to you, but for me, I find it so darn easy. I was in Toronto when I first wrote Four Kids. I began writing it on a trip. Um, I just had my, my fourth child, and even in coming from a community and from an ethnic background, the Caribbean, where having a lot of children um, is normal, there were some, you know, some pressures from concerned people in my community that, you know, this society is not like our society back home, right? This society, you have to think about money, and you have to think about um, attaining, obtaining things like a home, how are you going to put your children through education, through the school system, before you think about growing a family. And so, being young, I took those as negative things. I'm like, no, I'm doing it my way, too bad. I want four, ch I actually want six children. I would love to have a, a full, that's what I consider a full family, right? Um, but I took what they were saying into consideration and I decided to write a response to that. So you wanna know, four kids, how do I afford it? Well, allow me to let you in on my little secret. You see, it's not the money I'm concerned with. Besides, God promises you with sustenance, and in Him you should have total reliance. I'm more concerned with teaching them, breeding them with food for thought, so it's like I'm constantly feeding them, grooming them with love, love for peace, patience, and respect for their neighbors, their elders, and those closest to their neck. You see, it's a fire I'm kindling. So when it's time for thinking, my offspring will have some sort of inkling. They can discern the difference between right and wrong in an instant without blinking. I'm not ashamed to say that I'm or, I mean, I live, I live moderately. I try to make sure that my children don't feel ostracized because I went through that growing up. I was, when I came to Canada, I felt poor and I was. Upbringing children shouldn't be based on how much you put away for a rainy day, your monetary achievement, or your retirement. Rather, their worth is weighed by what they say, not to live in the past or for the future, not having to make atonements for wasting time and idle enjoyments, but to be a proponent of living in the moment today. <laughs> it's exhilarating to know that my words are touching people that way. And when I walk, I walk with an extra strut in my step knowing that, right? Not because my pockets have an extra check, but because my heart, you know, has an extra piece of somebody, you know? That really, that's really what keeps me going, you know? That's wealth to me. So the next time I'm chilling with my four beautiful children and someone comes up to me insisting, four kids, mm-hmm, y'all better do something. I look at them with a sly grin and nonchalantly tell them, watch out, cause there's two more coming, God willing.